Hello and welcome to the MongoDB course topic number three where we will be talking about schemas and types and um, what types we can cast in our schemas and options like timestamps, object IDs, and defaults. Alright, so first I want to start out by talking about schemas. So Mongoose is a library that helps you work with MongoDB. It makes a lot of things easier and it gives you functionality that MongoDB doesn't come with out of the box. And then later on we will go through how you can create schemas and um, actually show you examples of them and give you some good hands-on experience. Like I said before, schemas are not necessary with MongoDB, but when using Mongoose, you need to create schemas in order to create a model and then create methods on top of that model. So schemas are necessary in our example in this course. The benefits of creating schemas are pretty vast. They make your database structured and define the shape of documents in your collections and what that does is that allows you to kind of have predictable behavior and to be able to know what is happening behind the scenes so it allows you to go into your node application see a schema and update a certain type of a particular field if you need to Whereas if you did not have schemas and you were just using MongoDB client, you would really not have a sense of what is stored in the database. You might need to go into the shell and query your current documents and see what's in there. But by having a schema, you can have predictable behavior when it comes to developing your application out further. So I mentioned it defines the shape of the documents in your collection. What it also does is it typecasts those fields or those properties in each document. So I'll go over in a minute what types you can cast into a property of a document, but schemas just give you really easy way to define what you would like each field to actually be, like a string or a number. Or you can also have binary data and you can have references to other object IDs, which I will go over later on in this course. Schemas also make it possible to have hierarchical database structures. So what this means is that you can have one schema inherit another schema. And the benefits of this are, say for example, you have a user for your application, and then you have an admin user as well. The regular user would be able to view data, view pages, maybe log in and manipulate their own account. An admin would be able to manipulate other users accounts and an admin might also be able to change the data or the the views of each page so since you have different permissions in your application but each user shares certain properties like name username uh, authentication data maybe their email you would create a base user type or a base user schema and by doing this you can then have an admin inherit that base user schema because the admin user type would actually extend the base user type so an admin essentially will have every property of the regular user plus more so it's how object-oriented programming works and it's cool because it directly models how you would create and architect your application and 
the document structure and JSON structure make this possible. Another really cool benefit to using schemas is the fact that you can do validation. And it offers a really cool way to do this. You can validate enumerable properties, or you could do minimums or maximums. You can also do regular expressions. So I'll give you an example. You are storing somebody's phone number in a database. You can easily add a regex to that phone number property, which will reject any phone number that does not match the regex. Now, you would also want to do this on the front end as well, because you wouldn't want to be sending requests to the server that you know shouldn't be going there. So if a user enters a phone number that is 90 digits long, it should be rejected on the front end, but in the event that it does make it to the server, MongoDB has the ability to reject that as well. Enumerable properties would be something like, I would like the name of the school to be one of these properties. Main Street School, Second Street School, Third Street School. Any other string that does not match one of those enumerable properties gets rejected. Document cannot store anything besides those properties. I also mentioned minimum and maximum. This is pretty self-explanatory, but an example of this would be minimum mileage on a car, 10,000 miles, maximum mileage on a car, 100,000 miles. Anything outside of that range would not be stored in the mileage property of your document. So the drawbacks of creating your schema ahead of time in MongoDB would be the fact that it's more rigid than dynamic schemas. So when you elect to create dynamic schemas, you can store whatever you want in a collection and you can create collections at any point throughout your development process. I mentioned before that this is good for agile teams, teams that are iterating quickly and pivoting on ideas in a non-waterfall approach, which means there are many deliverables throughout the development process instead of one deliverable at the end. So by defining your schema ahead of time, you're kind of locking yourself in to the types that you define in that schema. You wouldn't be taking advantage of the huge differentiator that MongoDB comes with. Now I will talk about default values in a little bit, but I'll touch on it right now to give you a little bit of a background. Default values are something that you can define in your schema, which if you do not include a value for a property, there will still be a value assigned to the empty property. So for instance, I do not include a phone number in a user document that I just inserted. Default values makes it possible for me to insert 555555555 in the database when nothing is sent. There are many different reasons you would want to use default values. That one is pretty arbitrary, but you get the picture.